Greetings to all. In the last lecture, we have discussed the heat transfer methods, right? Like conduction, convection, radiation. In this lecture, we will identify the different thermal nodes and how the uh, heat is transferred from one node to other node, like stator winding to different parts of machine, like stator winding to end region or stator winding to core, like that. We can see here this machine. So, first we will identify the different parts of thermal uh, sources or with respect to the losses, what are the th heat sources and based upon the heat sources, how the heat is transferred. Let us say from winding to end winding, here we can see this is the inside the core and in the slots the windings are placed. So, from the slot region of the winding to end winding, then end winding to uh, shielding through the radiation. So, we will identify different nodes with respect to the thermal aspect and we will analyze the how heat flow is happening either it is conduction or convection or radiation. First we will discuss the heat sources. So, the main heat sources are nothing but loss components right. So, the stator copper loss and rot uh, stator core loss rotor copper loss and rotor core loss. Copper loss with respect to the stator and rotor it will be I square R losses and core losses will be hysteresis and eddy current losses and mechanical losses are nothing but friction and windage losses. We can see the stator copper loss with respect to the stator winding, stator core loss with respect to the stator core and rotor core loss with respect to the rotor core and rotor windings either it may be squirrel cage bars or windings on the rotor and mechanical losses with respect to the bearing portion and uh, end region portion or end air with respect to the uh, rotation of the rotor how windage losses are happening that are the mechanical losses. Now, we will identify the thermal nodes. So, we have observed the heat sources, one is at here copper losses, stator core losses and rotor core losses, rotor, uh, rotor copper losses and mechanical losses with respect to the friction and windages. So, these are the sources. Now, to make the heat transfer from one point to other point, we will define the or we will define, divide the mission surface into different thermal nodes. In this image, I have shown the quarter section of the uh, machine and this image I have taken from the LiPo textbook and the different thermal nodes we can see here and thermal node 1 represent the stator windings and thermal node to represent the stator end winding. This is stator end winding. We can see here this is the stator winding node 1, stator end winding node 2 and stator uh, teeth is node 3 and stator core is node 5. So, stator part is divided into 4 nodes, stator winding, stator end winding, stator teeth that is 3 and stator core is nothing but 4. Same way 5, 6, 7, 8 are representing rotor winding that is 5 and rotor end winding that is 6 and rotor uh, teeth is 7 and rotor core is 8th node and air gap represents the node number 10 and 18 represents the radial duct and 9 represents the frame, machine frame that is this one this is nothing but frame and enclosures we will see at the both sides of the machine that are nothing but 14 and bearings are represented with 13th node and shaft is represented with 12th node and 11th is nothing but air gap space at the end ring portion. We can see here some portion is there right, I am showing with laser pointer here. This end ring region, the air gap region is nothing but uh, thermal node 11 and ambient is represented with 15 and stator 
end support is nothing but 16 the stator core to frame connection. These are the different nodes with respect to the machine induction machine and how the heat is transferring from one node to other node we will see now. So, total 18 nodes we have divided the machine and we can divide or we can decide these thermal nodes depends upon the analysis whether it can be 18 or whether it can be 5 or whether it can be 20 to make the more accurate thermal modeling we have to select the higher number of thermal nodes. First uh, we will discuss with respect to the stator winding. So, this is the stator winding we can see here. So, from the stator winding the heat is generated with respect to the losses and it is transferred to the stator end winding. So, the end winding is directly in contact right through the conduction the end winding is happening red color line means conduction end winding region it is going the conductors which are placed in the slot uh, duration uh, slot portion to the end winding portion. Then stator winding to the stator core or teeth portion we can see here through the radiation and small portion of conduction because thermal conductivity of slot liners we can see in this image that white color uh, uh, insulating papers. The insulating paper thermal conductivity is small, but the conduction is happening slight conduction that is red color line and purple line is representing the radiation. And through convection it is uh, heat is transferred to the air gap and through radiation also heat is transferring to the air gap. So, from stator winding to the air gap heat is transferred through the conduct, uh, convection as well as radiation. These are the different uh, paths or different heat transfer uh, methods from stator winding to stator end winding, stator core and air gap. Same way if I will consider the stator core or teeth from stator core with respect to the core losses the heat is dissipating and few, uh, some part of heat can be come from the radiation as well as conduction from the winding because winding temperature is very high and core temperature is slightly less as compared to the winding temperature. So, from stator core to teeth to frame through the conduction as well as radiation it is dissipating the heat or transferring the heat core to frame and core to stator end surface through conduction because it is a physical contact is there right between stator core and stator end surface. That is why there is a conduction with respect to the physical surface or physical contact. Then radial ducts if is there any radial ducts are there here radial means in the in this direction axial means we in parallel with the uh, shaft perpendicular to the shaft will be radial direction. So, the radial duct it is uh, heat is transferred through the convection manner green color and to the air gap also with respect to the con uh, convection the heat is transferred because there is no contact from teeth to uh, air gap right only air, uh, air is there. So, with respect to the convection heat is transferred to the air gap from the core. Next rotor winding also same with respect to the copper loss involved in the rotor winding then heat is transferred to the rotor core or teeth with respect to the insulating material. Generally there is no insulating material which separate the rotor slots as well as uh, aluminum bars. Since it is a squirrel cage no need of uh, insulating material with respect to the slot liner directly uh, through the conduction heat will transfer and then rotor winding to rotor end winding it will be through uh, convection and uh, radiation as well as conduction also will come because these two are in directly in contact right. So, there will be a conduction 
part also from the end winding to the rotor end region. Rotor end winding and rotor windings are directly connected right. So, it will through the conduction we can see the heat transfer. Next rotor end winding to the surface, rotor end surface also through a physical contact it will be the conduction. Next rotor core or teeth and rotor core there will be a losses with respect to the hysteresis and eddy currents and these losses are dissipated in the form of heat and this heat will transfer to the air gap through the convection and uh, to the uh, rotor end winding it will be to the uh, convection only and again rotor end winding to the rotor end surface it will be the conduction. Then rotor core to core and teeth to stator core and teeth through the radiation manner because there is no uh, connection between rotor core and stator core with respect to the air gap through the radiation it will transfer the heat. Since the rotor core is uh, at the middle of the machine after that windings are coming that is why the end winding is uh, conduction uh, sorry convection I have mentioned here. If the rotor end winding temperature is high as compared to the core then heat will not transfer from the rotor core to teeth. This will not come if the temperature of this thing is greater than temperature of this thing. Okay. If this part temperature is greater than rotor core temperature then this heat transfer will not happen as per the thermodynamics second law principle. And now we will see the complete heat flow diagram with respect to the induction machine. First uh, we can see the different thermal nodes stator winding or slot portion and stator end winding and stator core or teeth and frame stator end surface overhang region and air gaps end shield radial duct and axial duct and rotor winding and rotor core and rotor end surface and bearings and rotor end winding. These are the different thermal nodes we have considered and now we will see how the heat is uh, transferring is happening. So, the red color line represents the conduction. So, the stator winding portion to the stator core and core to frame or core to uh, end surface and finally, everything is related to the ambient heat is transferred to the ambient. Next with respect to the convection we can see the green color lines here stator winding to the air gap, stator core to the air gap whatever we have discussed one by one all things I am uh, clubbing here the heat flow and the purple line represents the radiation. We can see here from the frame to the ambient the heat is dissipated or heat is transferred through the conduction, convection and radiation all three manner the heat is transferred to the uh, ambient. Same, same way from the end shield, end shield is nothing but the supports at the both sides of the uh, machine we can see here this is the end shield, this is the one end shield or end cap. So, from the end cap to ambient also through the convection and radiation the heat is transferred. Next we can see the rotor winding to core portion and then uh, rotor end surface and bearings to the ambient how the uh, heat is transferred and same way with respect to the all aspects or all thermal node the complete thermal heat flow diagram for uh, any mission here I have shown for induction machine but any mission we can realize in this fashion the heat flow diagram. The yellow color line representing the air or coolant flow, the coolant is flowing through the radial duct as well as axial duct you can see here then axial duct to the air gap region then the air gap region to the overhang region. Then from the uh, axial duct to overhang region again then overhang region to back to ambient 
this is with respect to the axial and radial duct directly it will go to the air gap region then overhang region and from the overhang region it is coming out to the ambient again. And similarly we can see the different nodes how the heat transfer. With this I am concluding this lecture. In this lecture we have discussed the heat uh, transfer uh, with respect to the different nodes of a electrical machine especially induction machine we have discussed. Thank you.